I have here the new Wood River uh, four and a half smoothing plane blade. It's a T10 steel, very similar to what we used to have as a W1 water quench steel. Uh, very good quality. I'm going to do is straight out of the uh, the box. I'm going to have to sharpen this one up, see how we fare with it. I'm going to use scary sharpening. It's a system we use a lot of the time in our furniture school. This is the finest paper we tend to go down to. That's a three micron. That's equivalent to about eight or nine thousand grit. First thing I'm going to do is just turn this over and cut this through onto a strip. We tend to have strips about sort of 67, 70 mil wide. And I'm going to put this down to some glass. Get rid of those bits out of there. Piece of glass that I've got here. We tend to use six different microns or grits of uh, abrasive paper on here. These are all uh, self adhesive, PSA backed, pressure sensitive adhesive, which means they basically self stick down. We start from this 80 micron, 80 micron is equivalent to about 180 grit on the, the FIPA scale, the, the P that you tend to see. These are aluminium oxide abrasive. These ones are all designed for micro finishing of uh, metalworking cam shafts. So they're really quite robust and hard wearing. We've used various types over the years. These are ones that we tend to find are the best in our workshop. We're going to stick these down. There's two different ways we can stick these down. We can either peel them back off and just lay them straight down with a roller, or I find better actually is to spray some water on the glass beforehand. If you do spray water on the glass beforehand, you may want to do this perhaps on a Friday if you're going to use it on a Monday, um, just to let any extra water disperse. The idea of letting the water in there actually gets rid of any bubbles. What you don't really want is air bubbles underneath. It's easy to actually push out, a bit like fixing um, stickers onto air fix models you may have done, you know, as you were a child. Anyway, I'll see if I can peel these back. What I didn't do in preparation for this is we're only fingernails, but we'll see how we get on. Oh, that one's come off there quite easily. Get rid of that rubbish out of the way. I'll spray just a little bit of water on here. Not a huge amount, just a little bit to lay underneath this abrasive. I'll put them up against this end quite tight. You'll see a little bit of water underneath there. Use this roller basically push the excess water out and we should get this pretty flat. You may see at the edges it's not quite pushing down just because it was just a little bit rolled up. All this paper wasn't totally flat but if you leave that over the weekend all the excess water will come out. I'm going to leave it over the weekend because I'm going to do the same on the other side. Just this Lino Craft roller is great for putting these down. Next one I put on there, next to that one is a 40 micron. 40 micron is equivalent to about 360 grit. These coarser grits we only tend to use if we haven't got a grinder perhaps and we've taken a chip out of our blade we go back to these coarse ones. I should think for the other side or for the fresh blade we'll just use much finer abrasives but we'll see how we go with it. It's always an option to come back down to these coarse ones if you need to. Put a little water on that one again. You can use water as the lubricant when you're using these abrasive sheets. But I tend to like to keep water away from my tools generally. Just push those little bubbles out. Pretty quick to to put on. Another way you can do it just to help is just pierce the back with a sharp knife. So you a sharp knife, the corner's missing off that one. Bit more spray on there. Push that one around and lay him down. I tend to lay these down quite close to the edge of the glass at the end just because it's good for backing off the new blade. I'll flip them over and do my sheets on three abrasives on the back of these and these have got uh, the 80, the 40 and the 20 micron. I'm not going to put any water on these ones because I want to use these ones straight away. I'll do, I'll lay this one down. Here's a 15 micron. 
is 15 microns, equivalent to about 1200 on the FIPA scale. Now it's gone down nice and flat. This one here is a 9 micron, 9 microns, equivalent to about 2,500 grit, which is pretty fine. This will give you a fairly good finish. In fact, you could finish your sharpening at this, and for most general woodworking, that would be pretty damn good. If you want to improve on that finish, you can use a leather strop, which is what I tend to use, fixed to a piece of oak. Otherwise, our standard in the workshop here is to go down to this 3 micron. This 3 micron is about 8 or 9,000 grit. Pretty damn fine. This is a slightly different makeup. This is on a much thinner film. These are more called in, uh, imperial lapping film. Not as robust as the other abrasives, but this is just for our very final finishing. Those are quite successfully laid. What we're going to use now, we're going to use this, uh, this new blade and see if we can get him sharpened up. First I'm going to work on the back, just to back that one off. Some people tend to use a ruler trick. I'll get my little ruler from up here. It's one I do use on occasions. You can see it's getting a bit worn down here. Some people use a ruler trick to lift the blade up very slightly. It's about a half a degree. I personally prefer, if I can, to put a bit of investment of time in at this stage and get the back of this totally flat, or certainly up around the top the end back down again. I'm not so keen on lifting the blade up, I like to keep the back flat if possible. I'm going to start off probably using the 15U and see how we get on with the face of this one. You could use water on there but I'm not over keen on getting water onto my tools, rusting. We do have a rust inhibitor we can put in there which is a, a shield technology product but otherwise we tend to use this home right fluid. This is the number one, this is a basically a oil based it comes with a cap on it. Um, I tend to just pierce a small hole in that cap just with a, an old bradle just to help me drip that on there. And find this fluid pretty quick cutting. We'll see how we go with this one. Don't want to get too much on there. Put the blade onto this one, turn it around a little bit, and just see with some pressure on there how much work the back of this blade is going to need. You never quite know until you get a brand new blade, you can see the metal's coming off, the blackness already onto there. Make sure you're keeping this blade very nice and flat on there. Don't be tip. Don't be tempted to lift it, as I'll tend to say. Let's just see. If we can see where we're getting shiny. We're getting shiny across here at the moment, so we need a bit more across that far end. Let me see where we go this one. Sometimes you may have to go to a slightly coarse abrasive on the other side. If I can get away with it, I'll try these ones first. I may need to step up to a slightly coarser one. We're getting a shiny patch across here, so it needs some more work doing at the end there. I'll continue with that one. I might just pop over to the other side and see how we're going on. Here we go up for the 20 U. If I had an old Stanley or Record blade, I may have to go right up to something quite coarse, get him back in the shape if he's been misused over the years. If I was starting off with a Veritas blade, I'd probably just go straight to the 3 U. Anything coarser than that, I think you're going to spoil the hard work the Veritas have put into your blades. You can see the metal is actually coming off onto these already, metal is being removed.